I'm Shannon Miller, and welcome to my capstone presentation uh, for my project, which is called First Class Network Learning Environments for Kindle Farm School. I'm going to ask that all questions be held until the end, um, unless you need clarification on something, in which case just let me know. So a little bit about myself to start. Um, I've been an educator for six years uh, in two different ways. Sort of I've worked in schools, but I've also worked in summer camps the whole time. Um, and one thing sort of in common with both of those things is that I've always worked with youth who have either learning disabilities um, or behavioral disabilities. So that kind of led me to Gardner Multiple Intelligences and just always looking for something else to get kids involved um, or to motivate them. And that's sort of what brought me to the MAT program. I saw a lot of kids being really involved with technology and loving it. And I sort of knew what to do with it, but not really. So this program's been a huge benefit to me as a teacher and I hope to my students. Um, and so I've been a teacher at Kendall Farm, um, the project sponsor, since 2007. I teach English in the high school, and I'll be going into my third year. This is a little bit um, about the faces behind the organization, the actual sponsors. Mark Donahue started out sponsoring the project uh, in January, and we knew that he would be wrapping up his time in June with the school. So it transferred pretty seamlessly over to Dana Gordon Macy, who's the new executive director. Um, and then Drew was also involved as the assistant director and also an MAT alum and my capstone advisor. So he's certainly worn a lot of hats in this project. The capstone sponsor, Kendall Farm School, was started in 1996. It is an independent alternative school. We have about 70 students. Uh, they come and they go. Some of them graduate with us. Some of them don't make it all the way through the program. And some of them transition back into their home districts. So we're kind of dealing with a wide population with very different needs. Uh, technology in, within Kindle Farm has been called an essential program. We have a number of these, academics, vocational. Uh, they're all different areas in which students are given an opportunity to really learn and master something. And technology was the one in which this project was happening. So the idea behind the capstone is that you identify a problem within an organization and come up with a solution. Um, I would say mine went a little bit differently than that, but in a good way. I emailed Drew at first and Dana and just sort of asked, is there anything going on that I could work on that I could do uh, with my capstone presentation? And a number of responses came back. I think you had four or five options. And I really liked this one that had to do with the kids needing a networked learning environment, uh, mostly because I would be using it. And I also deal with the problem of them not being able to find their stuff every single day. <laughs> so the main problem became identified um, as difficulty saving and relocating their work. And I kind of got to that just by going back, doing root analysis things, like why do we need a network in the first place? It's because we're wasting time. It's because people are getting aggravated, not being able to find their work. We had some other issues, too, that maybe were not key things, but would be great if we could get them solved. Um, students weren't able to work outside of class, really, um, and especially not outside of school. A number of them have computers, have internet access at home, and had expressed interest in using that, but they weren't connecting to school in any way. Um, communicating is sort of a huge thing in our school. It's a big theme. Um, and right now, the only way that students and staff could communicate was face-to-face -face verbally. And I think that adding another avenue to do that uh, is a great option for them. And relevant skills, lastly, we weren't really doing things like emailing or uploading documents, things that they really would be using if they transitioned back into a normal high school first, uh, into a job, or into a higher institutional learning. So looking at all those problems, our solution was really there already when I came, um, which is what made my project a little bit different, I think, was this was sort of here, and my challenge was more to figure out how do we integrate that, and also, is it the best tool for the situation? Um, it was kind of there because we've been using it as a staff for two years already. A number of staff use it successfully, use it to collaborate on work. It's the primary email of a lot of people, and we felt like the students could also do that. Some benefits of it, it's web-based. So we weren't going to have the, I think I left my stuff in my documents, but I don't know what on, you know, which computer I did it on. Uh, also, it was low cost. We had already bought it, we had a host, uh, and we also had licenses that weren't being used. 
So all we had to do was reassign those licenses, um, you know, and pay the host for a little bit of help getting this started. Uh, another really great thing that we haven't done yet, but I like that is there, um, is room to grow. If we decide to involve parents in the communication or other social workers, members of the community, we really have that option with first class. So the beginning of this process, um, and to give you an idea of the timeline, this was probably around February or March, um, really about, was evaluating what existed. What kind of networks did we already have? We have three campuses at Kendall Farm. Each one had their own network. Um, and some of them had two networks, like the one I was at. Um, and a number of the kids did know how to use them, and then there were those that didn't. And then there were a lot of staff that didn't. So it was really hard to get your stuff saved, to save it correctly, and to be able to find it again were some significant challenges for a lot of people there. So talking to staff and students for me meant going up to someone and saying, hey, can you show me how to save this in the network? And most students would either you know, run into a problem halfway through and forget where they were going, or in a few situations, the whole server was down. So that kind of led me to think it was OK to go ahead with first class at this point. And we started working with Learning Networks, which is our host. Um, and what we worked on, really, at first, was creating a template that was going to solve the problem of getting confused and losing your stuff. So we wanted something that was really organized, something that was easy to use, had really big icons, almost, I want to say. When I talked to students, something that I noticed um, was that our non-readers, which we do have a pretty significant population of, they couldn't tell the difference between things in the network because they're all manila folder icons. Whereas with first class, they're different, um, they're big pictures, and it's really easy for those kids to tell what they're looking at. That led to the middle and the deliverable. That was the most exciting thing of the whole project when I got the student template um, because I finally had something to show staff and show kids and say, hey, we're going to have this and start getting people really excited about it. Um, so this, like I said, we wanted it really clear. So we've got three kind of straight um, lines for them to organize their stuff in, you know, my files and my things. What are we doing as a group and what's going on outside of class? And the kids have responded really well to that so far. The change management plan was not initially going to be a part of my project. Um, but I started the class planning for change in April. And um, the change management plan really did a couple of things for me. I'm not a person who always has a backup plan. And that's not worked for me a lot in the past. Uh, and doing this plan really enabled me to look at the situation from a couple angles say, what happens if this breaks? What happens if this goes wrong? What's going to happen then? Uh, what happens if this person doesn't like my project? What am I going to say? And being able to plan ahead for that um, was a huge advantage for me in this entire project, and definitely something that's going to stick with me, I think, past this. Um, we hit a roadblock in May, a big one. <laughs> um, I guess my initial plan, which never works out, was to go in maybe one or two times during the summer, help people figure out how to use this, and they could use it in whatever they were learning this summer. And then I would assess how they did. But when we went in to see um, you know, what are they going to be doing this summer and who's going to be teaching it, uh, it wasn't really clear. Um, it seemed like in the past they had done some work reading, some, you know, some math work, and some sketching. But it wasn't planned. Um, there wasn't really a way to put materials together for it. and it really wouldn't work with first class. So my concerns with that, um, basically that it wouldn't be used at all, um, or that it would be underused. And basically, I really wanted this to be a part of a curriculum. I wanted you know, to be the central part. And I wanted it to enhance what was already going on. So at that point, I added the deliverable to the program. Um, I offered to write a curriculum. And then I offered to deliver it, because I was worried about it. <laughs> And I just wanted to make sure that it went well. Um, so project-based learning was something that we talked a lot about in Pedagogy 1. I thought it was going to work really well for our guys uh, because they always want to relate it back to something that they either know about or they want to know about. And using kind of a business-based model, I was able to really integrate first class into that. You email in a business. You need these documents. You need to store your stuff and be organized if you're going to have a small business. So we were able to do all of that which was great. Prior 
to the start of the summer session with these guys. I had the staff in for a technical training on a first class. It was about nine staff at that time. Um, and the way I set it up was really kind of based on what we did in PED 2, just learning, um, you know, to throw out what it is in kind of a short way, have people try it out themselves and go back and repeat it. And I felt like that was a successful method. Um, but in case it wasn't, I also left job aids behind so people could really just look at those graphics, see the screen, what am I supposed to be doing. And I did collect feedback after that, um, and most people seemed to be helped by it. Um, I would say, though, that people who were on an advanced level were a little bit, uh, they weren't paying as much attention, they thought they got it right away, and I haven't seen them use it too much. So I think if I were to train again, I would maybe want to do separate groups, people who consider themselves advanced, people who think they're more intermediate, um, and really base it a little bit more at their level. Support is one of my deliverables, and it's the only one that I didn't print something out for, because it's not something that was really tangible. Um, it, I offered it to everyone, and it came up a couple times. Technical issues was something that would pop up once in a while in class and was generally something like the server name wasn't typed in right or it was just really easy to fix within a minute, I would say. Um, and when I wasn't able to in the beginning, luckily Drew has more experience than I do, so we were okay. Um, further training popped up twice and I was really excited about this. Two people who felt like they um, weren't too sure what was going on with first class kind of approached me and said, hey, can we work on this a little bit more after you're done with the kids? And we did that and I thought it was great and those people really have been using the program a lot. And I think it shows a good example too that they went out of their way to learn it to the kids. So, um, home downloads was the last way I did support. Two different kids had asked, hey, can I download this at home and use it from there? Um, one person I just wrote up instructions for and then the other guy brought his laptop in and we just did it at school. So evaluating the project, um, student feedback was one thing I collected and I should note um, I was just asking them at this point to evaluate first class. The pilot program of uh, the entrepreneurs is still going on for another week. So um, Regarding first class, I like this because it's easy to figure out, it's all laid out, it's great to talk to other people and I know where my stuff is. Um, these comments really for me kind of summed up what the goals were for us. Is it clear and organized? It seems that way. Are they motivated? Some of them are at least. And the best thing for me is I know where my stuff is. When I was doing this project, I really tried to look at it from two lenses. I had the kind of technology point where I was integrating the system, worrying about training. Um, but I also wanted to consider it as a teacher because that's who will be using the program with the kids and I'll have to as well. Um, so I wanted to make sure that this was something that wasn't um, more of a distraction or more of a time suck for me. But I actually wound up thinking that significant time was saved by the program. Um, a lot of time was spent in the past with kids asking, where's my stuff? I can't find it. If they couldn't find it, they might have to do it over or they might get frustrated and not want to do it at all. And those really aren't risks that I wanted to keep taking in class. So all summer long, no work, not a single document was lost, which is a really great stat for us, I think. Um, the student interest level was up, and I thought the work quality that I'm used to seeing really improved. And I have a few examples just of, um, this is a business card that one of the students created. Um, and I like about first class as well. We can do stuff in all different, like this is from publisher but this kind of serves as a house where we can keep it all. Writing work, uh, I didn't hear any complaints, which was another big surprise. They were excited because this is coming in an email, and I think that's cool. It's better than getting notebook paper and pencil again to them. So they kind of did it, put a little effort into it, and I was really pleased with it. There are challenges that continue to exist with the project. Um, staff motivation, I put there considering as a future issue because there's not a lot of time. Like in any school, you only have so much time to learn a tool and really know how to use it. And I think as an organization, we have to be careful about what we expect staff to do um, and when we expect them to do it. So I wouldn't want to say, hey, here's a new program the first week of school and everybody needs to be using it by next Monday. So I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. 
Um, minor adherence to the old network. There's a few students that really love their networks <laughs> and they don't want to let it go. And that's, you know, that's okay. Um, where it runs into a problem for me is when they decide to help other students save in that network and then they can't really find their way back. So I'm not sure uh, a future consideration might be getting rid of those. I'm not sure. Um, figuring out the best use for each application, that's within first class. So all of those icons do a different thing. Um, you might have instant messaging, which was a huge hit this summer. However, it was not in my curriculum. <laughs> so in the future, I would definitely find a way to involve that in and make it worthwhile in class instead of just always having to say, uh, get off instant messaging over and over. So the future of the project, um, first class will be used in my room in the upcoming year, which is all the high school English students. Um, and I really want to try to just set an example. What are the benefits to my class? How is this making it easier for me? So that people can kind of get a little interested in it and maybe want to use it instead of just have it be sort of a mandated thing. Um, the project summary that I did, uh, it does include a recommendation that we use it with all students. However, after doing it with this big of a group, I think I would want to do it in smaller groups. Um, there's a person at each campus who is sort of indicated that they'd like to be involved, uh, a teacher, and that they really would like to learn the program first, have their classroom try it, and then maybe have it spread out to the rest of the school. And I think that's a great way to go instead of trying to do the whole student body at once. Um, that is the end of this presentation, but I'd like to talk a little bit about what's in front of you. Um, the change management plan, which is the first thing, um, I talked about this a little bit, and that's part of my planning for change class, which I think I put as 30%.